Hello, this is David Diga Hernandez, and you're watching Spirit Church here on the Encounter TV Network. Now, I want to talk to you about the most powerful miracle worker alive on earth today. Of course, I'm talking about the Holy Spirit. And I'm finishing now my two-part message, The Ministry of the Holy Spirit. But first, Stephen Moctezuma is here with me. He's going to lead you in some anointed worship, and then we're going to get right into this message. Here is Stephen Moctezuma. I give you glory for all you brought me through. And now I'm ready for whatever you want to do. I'm moving forward to follow after you. And now I'm ready for whatever you Your presence is an open door. We want you, Lord, like never before. Your presence is an open door. So come now, Lord, like never before. In every season, your grace has been enough. And I'm believing that the best is yet to come. The cross before me, my hope on things above. And in you, Jesus, the best is yet to come. Your presence is an open door. We want you, Lord, like never before. Your presence is an open door. So come now, Lord, like never before. I know breakthrough is coming. By faith, I see a miracle. My God has made me a promise and he won't stop now. And I know Breakthrough is coming by faith. I see a miracle. My God has made me a promise and he won't stop now. Your presence is an open door. We want you, Lord, like never before. Your presence is an open door So come now, Lord, like never before I like to say that there's not something special about me there's some one special about me. The presence of the Holy Spirit and the power of the Holy Spirit are what make the difference in your life. His presence and His power make you distinct and unique. You become someone who brings about the will of God in the earth, a vessel through whom the power of God can flow and touch the world around them. It is the presence of the Holy Spirit that makes all the difference. If you're weak in faith, if you're dry in spirit, if your prayer life is dying, if your devotion to the Word is waning, then the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit are your answers to your problems. You need the power of the Spirit. You need His presence. His presence is like a mighty rushing river, and His power is like fire within your being. 
When you have the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit, you don't get tired. You have a consistent, eternal, divine energy. You begin to do things from the source of His power rather than the source of your own strength. When you have the presence of the Holy Spirit, everything about you is changed and transformed. You become God's glory within the earth. You become an atmosphere that moves around, creating heavenly, divine appointments wherever you go. And this person, the Holy Spirit, has a vast ministry. Now, in part one, I mentioned several points about the ministry of the Holy Spirit, and those points were as follows. Number one, He helps us to pray. Number two, He helps us to understand the Word. Number three, He helps us to live holy lives. And number four, He helps us to worship. And so, I want to continue now with part two of this message by listing three more distinct aspects of His ministry. Now, He performs the miraculous through us, or He is the miracle-working Spirit. He convicts us of sin. He gives us faith. These three things I want to cover by first going to Galatians chapter 3. And I'm going to read to you verse number 5. Now I have to give you the full context here. This is not talking specifically about how the Holy Spirit works miracles. Instead, that's a point that the writer of Galatians makes in passing as he makes his main point, which is about the law. But let's read it anyway, and I want to show you just what we can glean that truth about the Holy Spirit from this verse. Verse number five says, I ask you again, does God give you the Holy Spirit and work miracles among you because you obey the law? Of course not. It is because you believe the message you heard about Christ. So this is a rhetorical question, and this is primarily talking about the law. But again, in passing, we see this truth about the Holy Spirit that He is the one who God sends to work miracles among us. In fact, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, the Scripture talks about the gifts of the Spirit, those gifts being the gift of healing, and one of them being the working of miracles, and various other gifts that were listed. But the main point is here that I'm making is that the Holy Spirit is the one who gives us power to do miracles. Now, a miracle is different than a healing. A healing is something that would occur naturally on its own over time. So for example, a broken bone. If I pray for someone's broken bone to be healed and it heals quickly or instantly, that is a miraculous healing. It's miraculous because it happens so quickly. Now, a miracle is something that would not have happened on its own otherwise. These are divine appointments with impossible odds and coincidence, coincidences that create divine appointments for us. This is talking about water into wine. This is walking on water. This is the sun standing still. This is what the miraculous is. Those very unique miracles that occur. I know of preachers who've seen food multiplied. I know of preachers who've seen powerful manifestations of God's power within church services, things that defy logic, so to speak. But the miracle working power of God ultimately produces multiple different manifestations of His power. And this is the work of the Holy Spirit in you. He causes miracles to take place. Number two, He convicts us of sin. In John chapter number 16, verse number 8, the Scripture tells us about the Holy Spirit's work in the earth on a global scale. It says, And when He comes, He will convict the world of its sin and of God's righteousness, and of the coming judgment. Now, oftentimes we say, well, that's the world, not the church. But sometimes when the scripture talks about the world, it literally is talking about the entire world, the entire human population. Here, that's what it's talking about, the entire human population. The Holy Spirit convicts us not just of sin, but of God's righteousness and of the coming judgment. What is conviction mean? It basically means he gives us these strong beliefs. He embeds in us these very real, very intense, very internal knowings that we would not otherwise have without him. So he puts these, I would say, pieces of divine revelation and heavenly knowledge within our minds and in our hearts. And he continues to press on those truths, causing us to respond to them eventually. So when it says he convicts us of sin, it means that when we sin, he confronts that again and again and again until there's repentance. When it talks about God's righteousness, that means he's calling us not just to leave sin, but to model after Christ's righteousness. And then 
He will come after that. He'll continue to press on that. He will continue to model before you the image of Jesus and push you to a higher standing from, standard from glory to glory to glory. And then it talks about God's judgment. He puts within the human heart this deep knowing of right and wrong. That is the conviction of the Holy Spirit. I remember one time I was ministering at a church here in Southern California, and I'll never forget it because I had the whole church begin praying in tongues. I said, everybody here, just pray in the Spirit for five minutes. Now, before doing that, I had just preached a salvation message to which nobody responded. I preached on the blood of Jesus. I preached on the cross. I preached on heaven and hell. And for some reason, that just didn't do it. it. People didn't respond. Sometimes people just don't respond to the gospel. That's biblical. So what I did is I had everybody praying in the Spirit for about five minutes. And then this man about my age walks into the service, and he's looking around at everything. And as everyone is praying in tongues, he's just studying the room. And suddenly he begins to cry, and he begins to weep. And he runs down the aisle, kneels at the altar, and I ask him, sir, why are you crying? He says, because I've been trying to find God for so long, and tonight I believe he found me. In other words, he didn't even really understand what was happening in that moment. He wasn't even there for the salvation message. He had just wandered in off the street. It was a church on the storefront property. He wanders in off the street, and then he gives his life to Jesus. Why? Because of the convicting power of the Holy Spirit and nothing more. So the Holy Spirit performs the miraculous to us. He convicts us of sin. He is that voice in our hearts that tells us when we get off track and helps us to navigate our way back into the path of holiness. And then finally, number three, he gives us faith. In 2 Corinthians chapter number 4, verse number 13, the Bible says this, But we continue to preach because we have the same kind of faith the psalmist had when he said, I believed in God, so I spoke. This same spirit, this same anointing, this same stirring that was on the psalmist David, we know was the Holy Spirit. This is the faith. This is the unction that he gives to us. There are those moments in your Christianity where you may feel like your faith is becoming weaker, like your doubts are growing, like the darkness is beginning to surround you. Now, I don't know if you've ever noticed this, but sometimes you'll continue with your Christianity in a very compromised state, in a very powerless state. And you'll continue down this path where you're back and forth, where you feel like quitting, you feel like giving up, and your faith is just dwindling. And then suddenly, out of nowhere, you'll hear a word. You'll sit in a worship service. You'll read something on the internet that just stirs your faith, that just quickens you. That happens often. But then there are those times where you're persisting and you're doing your best and you feel like giving up. And suddenly, out of nowhere, you can't even explain from where it came. There is this stirring. There is this unction. That is the work of the Holy Spirit. It's His grace. Sometimes we don't even deserve those unctions. Sometimes we don't deserve those fresh stirrings. We weren't even looking for it oftentimes. But He comes and He stirs within us that faith. And He breathes new life in us because He is the Holy Spirit of faith. And wherever He is present, the faith for miracles arises. The faith for breakthrough arises. The faith to pray. The faith to seek God in the Word. The faith to step out in the ministry. It arises. If ever you're facing a situation and you feel you lack faith, your doubts are weighing you down, call upon the Holy Spirit. He is the faith-giving Spirit. So to recap, He performs the miraculous through us. He convicts us of sin and He stirs within us faith. That is it for the lesson. I want to pray with you now. I want to pray that the Holy Spirit would stir your faith. Because if He can stir your faith, He can cause you to receive everything else it is that He does for you. Let's pray right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I lift that one to you right now receiving this prayer. That one who needs strengthening in faith. That one who feels like giving up. That one who feels like quitting, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you would drive away all doubt. And that by your Holy Spirit, you would stir faith. 
you would move that mountain of doubt. I thank you, Lord, for the anointing and the power that is moving through this media now. Some of you, you feel that. It's the power of God. That's His power touching you right now. Some of you never felt anything like this. This is His Holy Spirit. So, Lord, do a deep work in that heart and stir faith within them. In the name of Jesus, we pray. I want you to say it because you believe it. Say, Amen. Well, that is it for the lesson. I want to welcome now the new members of Spirit Church. There you are up on the screen. We love you. We are praying for you. I always say that, of course, because I always mean it. If you'd like information on how you can join the Spirit family, then go to davidhernandezministries.com slash spiritchurch. When you join the Spirit Church family, now over 6,000 members strong, you're going to get a brand new email teaching from me every single week. And along with that, you're going to get a new song from Stephen Moctezuma. He does worship covers, worship originals, awesome work by Stephen. So you'll get a lesson from me, Fresh from Heaven, or a sermon, and you'll get a worship song from Stephen. And you can reply to that email for prayer support from our ministry staff. If you'd like, again, information on that, just go to davidhernandezministries.com slash spiritchurch, absolutely free. I want to read your comments now. And the comments are from the last video, which was part one, the ministry of the Holy Spirit, part one of two. Now, if you'd like me to read your comments, then go ahead and comment below right now. And next week, I may read your comments. But remember this too, subscribe, like, share our content. And when you do subscribe, be sure to hit that notification bell so that you're actually notified when our content comes out. Here's a little hint. When the video first comes out on YouTube, I'm usually personally looking at it for about the first hour or so. So if you are there in the first hour when that video comes out, you're very likely to get a response from me as opposed to later on. The only way you can know right when a video comes out is if you have that notification bell clicked. So these are the comments from last week's lesson. Again, the ministry of the Holy Spirit, part one of two. Doka Luana writes, Thank you for everything. I really want to learn more about the Holy Spirit because I want to walk in the will of our Father in heaven. I'm so grateful for the Holy Spirit and this ministry. God bless you all. Cherry Bondock writes, I'm learning so many things about the Holy Spirit because of your channel. Glory to God for your life and your team, Brother David. The next commenter writes, Praise the Lord, Pastor David. I am Richard from Uganda. I have been following your teachings through YouTube, which I am really blessed by. May Almighty God increase you and continue to use you. In Jesus' name, be blessed. Shandy Krish writes, Hello, David. I am really thankful for your teachings. As I listen to you, I am glued to what you are saying. As you pray, I can always feel the tangible power of the Holy Spirit, no matter what situation I am facing in my life. God bless you. Well, we know that many lives are changed. This is the Holy Spirit's channel, not ours. He can do whatever He wants to do through this. Now, you know our heart. We want to win souls and build believers through events and media. We want to keep our events free. We want to keep this media free. Every single week, we work really hard at presenting you our very best in music, in teaching, in events. And we want to see this ministry expand. Look, I told you before, and I'll say it again, and it's going to happen, I promise you. You'll see stadiums filled. You'll see millions being reached with the power of God through our media. And you'll see a mighty army of believers raised. Look, now more than ever, we need this. We need this because our world needs it. Look at all the things happening in our world. We need the gospel. We can't just react to the world's problems. We have to stay ahead of them. And the only way we stay ahead of them is by preaching the gospel because we stay ahead of the issues by cutting to the heart of the issues. And the heart of the issue is sin. And the problem of sin is solved by the cure of the gospel. So help us spread the gospel in the power of the Holy Spirit through events and media and continue to win souls and build believers. Give a one-time donation today or become a monthly ministry partner by signing up at our ministry website. But if you'll sign up at $30 or more a month, I'll send you either Carriers of the Glory, 25 Truths About Demons and Spiritual Warfare, or Encountering the Holy Spirit in Every Book of the Bible. Again, when you become my monthly partner at $30 or more a month, I'll send you one of those books signed. It'll be my free gift to you, an initiation gift, just to say thank you for partnering with me. So whether you're giving a one-time gift or a monthly gift, 
All of it goes to the gospel. All of it goes to helping us continue to win souls and build believers through events and media. You can do that today. Go to davidhernandezministries.com slash donate. If you've been praying about doing this, now is the time to do it. Well, that is it for this edition of Spirit Church here on the Encounter TV Network. Until next time, remember, nothing is impossible with God. Thank you for watching Encounter TV. Don't forget to subscribe. Also, help me win souls by spreading the gospel through events and media. Make a one-time donation or become a monthly supporter by clicking on the donate link now.